Um, I agreed to uh, share a little bit here in the beginning. It's, I, as I told Glenn, um, it's not a, a message, it's a conversation. And it's about leadership that I want to I wanna talk about. You know, leadership is one of these unique things that it's either loved or mostly hated. Um, it's actually hard to find healthy leadership in anywhere in the world. However, I think that healthy leadership needs to be found in the church. However, there's been, um, I think, a fair amount of people have bumped into bad leadership or unhealthy leadership or poor leadership. And um, it's always interesting as I get older, I've been in these around people in churches and men that get chosen to go into leadership and you know they're they're supposedly have this maybe poor leadership of some sort and then there's a, there's this young man or somebody comes along and they're like hey this is a really good guy for this leadership he's really going to make a difference and in two or three years they come back to me and they said man he acts just like the rest have now it's easy to get hard on people like that, but you have, or have, you, have you ever thought about why that mostly happens? Why do most people go into leadership and end up doing what they claim they don't like to do? Have you ever thought about that? I think it's because they default to the only thing they know when they're in a tough situation. If you have a family and you grow up and you have ideas about being a better father than your own father and you find yourself in a tough situation, which, what do I do? You will default to what you know. So what's the answer to that? It's to think about and learn about a different kind of leadership. Like that's the only way we're going to break out of this. Uh, so I want to start that conversation. I, I actually have a very much of a passion in my life. I said, till I die, if I do one thing in life, is to help people that we come together as churches and as kingdom churches, whatever you want to call yourself, and start the conversation at least thinking about what is better leadership? What does that look like? How has that worked out? I personally believe that the success of every church will rise and fall on the leadership. Now, some people don't like to hear that, and that's okay. But I truly believe that. Um, I've had people, leaders come to me and complain about their people. And I like to tell them there's no bad churches, there's only bad leadership. <laughs> um, that usually rocks the world a little bit. But... One of the things I want to impress upon us as leaders is I don't think we know how to take ownership of leadership. I think it's easy to blame. It's easy to point fingers. It's easy to sidestep. It's easy to default to bad leadership. Whichever one of them we're doing, let's learn how to think better about leadership. And then if you think better, I think you're going to walk towards a better way of, of responding. I have a statement, and you decide if you like this statement or not. Everybody wants to follow healthy leadership. Now, I've recently changed that to most people, because I think it's a few 1% people that don't like to follow anything but themselves, okay? But in all, like, if you're a reasonable person, if you see healthy and good leadership, everybody's attracted to it. If you see bad leadership, everybody wants to run. Like, it is one of the two most influential things in the world. You either hate it or actually like it. What I find curious about leadership, you find a church that has a small percent of success, and the whole world wants to know how you're doing it. It doesn't take much success. It tells me something. It's a barometer that tells me that how bad we're lacking leadership and how well we need to... to uh, take this. So to uh, Andrew and Raymond, right? Learn to think well first so that you can learn to lead well.
You're not going to lead well if you don't think well. Um, and learn to know what your default position is. You need to change that. <clears throat> I personally don't think, the, the other thing that I see happen in, in, in leadership is leaders don't know how to make other leaders. If you, at the end of your leadership, whatever you call it, career, um, when you get older, you need to retire. If we don't make other leaders, I don't think we have succeeded in being a leader. Like, let's not fool ourselves. Um, I think that actually comes down to a lot of things. You know, your family, your friends around you. If, if, if you don't know how to influence well, you know, if you look behind you and no one's following, you're not a leader. Like, let's not fool ourselves. So I talked about that one of the things I want to impress upon you guys, you brethren, is that you need to take ownership of your church, of your leadership. The success of your church rises and falls on it. And I think the greatest, one of the greatest qualities that you can develop within your own heart and within your own life is to develop that you take 100% ownership of that place, of that responsibility. If, if you're a healthy leader, leadership or a healthy leader, you will have the ability to influence others to do what you're doing and better. Um, another thing that I bump into is leaders are threatened too often when someone younger or more educated or can communicate more effectively comes into their, their, into their area and they don't know how to handle that. Um, I came out of River Brethren, and when I, I was converted about 17 and a half, which was, which was a little rare, I was one of the earlier ones converted at my age. Prior to that, most of them either went into another church or just went into the world. There wasn't a lot of young people coming along, and my grandfather was bishop, and then my uncle, and then my father, or my brother-in-law was bishop when I was growing up. And he was a quiet man. His name was Amos Brooker. I was still living today. He's, he's retired. He actually had really bad health issues. But he, he did something very, very unique in a congregation. And I actually use him as an example because most men can't handle this. So he was not an educated man. He was not well-spoken per se. You went to him if you had practical issues about life. Like he had that kind of framework to help you with. But he was in a church. He wanted to be spiritual. How do you get there? Two men showed up in his, in his life. Their name was Donnie Breckbill and John Bears. Uh, but all these guys, are, this is a, uh, they're all living today. They both could teach and influence probably, I don't even know what ratio to put, probably you know, 50 to 100 times better. They had teaching abilities and influence. And I found this interesting to watch. I was like, because their influence was way more, I mean, Everyone knows Donnie Breckville to this day. John Byers is well known. Who knows Amos Brooker? He was the head elder behind those guys. Never threatened, at least not obvious. Allowed them to influence his church, influence all the, the greater uh, kingdom community. And that church went from a very struggling church to an extremely healthy church. All their families are doing very, very well. Spiritually, Emotionally, they're a healthy group of people because he had the ability not to be threatened and actually allow men with influence much better than him, and he, and he allowed it. Now, who did the greater work? He stayed at home and worked things out. Yeah, the, John and Donnie influenced, but they went everywhere. He stayed at home and they worked things out. Who did the greater work? It's a, I don't know if there's an answer to it because Don and Johnny or Don and John, John very much influenced that group, but he did the hard work of not being threatened and allowing that to work. That's a rare character, guys. Rare character. Most people can't step up to the plate and have that kind of character. How long am I going here? I lost track of time. <laughs> 
Um, so, Jesus speaks about two kinds of authority in Matthew. And I'm just going to read it. Everyone is familiar with it. It says, you know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. But it, but it shall not be so among you. What is not to be so? That you're to lord it over. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant. Now, we, I've heard that in verses since I've grown, since I was small. And whoever would be first among you must be servant or slave of all. That's the two kinds of authorities that I think God has given to humanity. It goes out to the, the, to the kingdoms of this world, to the authority that, that lords it over, and then it's the authority that goes to the church that the greatest is to be servant of all. Now we hear that. What is that? What does that look like? How is that communicated? You will be either known as a leader that rules lords over or as a servant of all. There's no in-between, guys. There's no in-between. Your leadership will either represent one or the other when you die. You'll be stamped as lord over or as servant of all. Which kingdoms do you represent? What kind of authority do you represent? We need them both in, in, in society to work, okay? We know the kingdoms of this world need that to work. But if we claim to be the kingdom of God, we've got to represent something different. So another thing I... Uh, that I think we should think about is the people in your church, are they having a good experience or a bad experience of leadership? You hold the keys to that, whether the, your church will have either a good experience or a bad experience. If your church is having a good experience of leadership, that is one of the areas and probably the greatest area that you will attract people to the kingdom. This is what people do not understand. Everyone wants to do evangelism. And then you go out and you do evangelism, and what happens? You come to the church, and you're disappointed at all levels. If, if we're not giving people a good experience, people come because of vision and leave because of poor, poor leadership. 100% across the board, whether it's church, business, governments, anything. They come because of vision and leave because of bad, poor, poor leadership. It is up to leadership... I think, to give people a good, healthy experience. So, I hope I've impressed upon you something that's not an easy task. I really do. And you've got to take it seriously. One of the key elements, I think, one of the key um, characteristics of a, of a leader that's actually going to succeed as being servant of all, how does, he, how does he work among you? Does he care about everyone's interest? Does he care about everyone's success spiritually, emotionally, physically, and economically? Does he care about that? Does he live his life in a way that he wants you to succeed? He wants you to develop. He wants you to become a better person than he is. Or is it all about himself? He's maneuvering and, and, and positioning himself. If you care about your people, you will develop them into something better than yourselves. And you can be like my brother-in-law, Amos. They don't know his name. That's powerful, guys. You do not realize how powerful that is. So as I said before, and I'll kind of close with this thought, everybody wants to follow healthy leadership. So what is leadership? Leadership, I think, is one of the most attractive things to follow. And like I said, if it's a bad leadership, it's one of the most hated and feared things on the planet. Let's be men that make it, that represent ourselves in a way that we're servant of all. And like I said, you can't fake that. Like, you can't fake it. You either are 
or become that kind of a person, or you become the person that's lording, lording over. I think I better stop there. I think my time's probably running out. I have a hunch. Um, so learn to produce leadership behind you, around you. If no one's following, you're not a leader. Learn to produce healthy, healthy leadership. Um, so I said I was going to be a conversation, and that's kind of what it was. I just want to put it out there. I'll let Brother Matthew uh, clean up the details. Thank you, and God bless.